Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where, as you can see, I raised my periapsis and apoapsis a fair amount, but I also got us an intersect where we're within 1.2 kilometers. So we're going to, oh this is quite soon, we're going to go ahead and execute this node. I did not realize that that was quite that soon. Okay. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Anytime now, Mechjeb. There you go. Okay. So we'll execute this node. We're going to be within 1.1 kilometers once we get to our nearest approach. We're going to fine tune that a little bit more once we get up there. There we go. And here we are. Perfect. Okay, so we are, looks like, within 1.2 kilometers at closest approach. So we're going to go ahead and warp to, let's see here, yep, right around here. Warp here. We should be seeing our target showing up over here relatively soon. Or actually, our target's here, moving faster than us. Genefin's pod. Excellent. Okay, so here we are. We are currently moving towards our target relatively swiftly. So we are going to do what? Relative velocity, I think? Relative velocity minus in order to match speeds with the target. 1.8, 1.7, 1.6. Yeah, we want to do this basically now. 1.2. Okay, we will be at our target velocity very, very, very shortly. Just break this a little bit further. There we go. Okay, what's going on with this drift? Point three, point two one. Okay, this is close enough. <laughs> so we want to go ahead and go directly towards the target at a very, very low velocity. We're only a thousand meters out, so if we go at around 10 meters per second or so, that'll be good. And then we'll burn the other side, target velocity minus, which should also be relative velocity minus. They should be the same thing virtually at this point. So we'll go for relative velocity reduction. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and warp a little bit here until we're about 100 meters out, which will be relatively soon. Two, okay. And let's go ahead and fire right about now. And get our target velocity down to zero. Excellent. Okay. Now, the reason this is changing so much here is just because we're turning. So we're going to kill Rot. And then, just because I'm paranoid, we're going to make a quick save. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's switch over to Genefin's pod over here. We can see our pod there. Genefin is going to go ahead and EVA. And get your RCS on there, Genefin. And off we go. We're going to see if we can't link up here. We are partway there. It's about a hundred meter spacewalk with no tether. Only a little hair raising. Okay, so here we are, and we'll just try to break a bit here, come on up. I think we're on the back side right now, so we'll just hop on over. Should have put lights on this thing. 
let's see. Yeah, I think this is the hatch. No, 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 no. Come on. You can't grab? Oh, there we go. Grab. And board. Excellent. Genefin saved. Okay, we're going to go ahead and transfer crew, Genefin, into the crew cabin. Okay. Fantastic. So we saved Genefin. His hulk is now kind of irrelevant. So we're going to go ahead and set Frandis's craft as the target. And then we are going to, at our periapsis, we have plenty of fuel for a second, for a second rendezvous. So we're going to go ahead and add a maneuver to bring this up to about that same 250. That's right about a little lower, a little higher. Right about... Oh, come on. There. That's good enough. And we'll execute that node. Good job, Genefin. You made your spacewalk. Okay, so now we need to do the same exact thing. And the question is, will we have enough fuel to do the same thing for this guy? That's a very eccentric orbit. And I don't know what the answer is to that. We can give it a go, and if it looks like we're not going to get it, we can abort. Like, if we go down to like 300 meters per second or something, that would be the... In our delta V in this stage, that would be the abort signal. But we can try. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do this, and then we're going to circularize at our new apoapsis. There we go. New apoapsis gotten right about... Now, that's close enough. A lot of maneuver, and we will increase our periapsis. Up to the same 250. Whoa now. Whoa now. Right about... Eh, actually... That's at 252. Right at about here. This will be good. Execute that node. Okay. So we've used up almost half of our fuel. But we shouldn't need too, too much fuel in order to rescue... Who is this that we're rescuing? Frandus. We shouldn't need too, too much fuel to rescue Frandus. This inclination change... And it's a really big orbit. Mm. I think we should do a second launch for Supont. I don't know that we've got the Delta V. Maybe we do. I mean, we've got two minutes of burn time left. Ugh. Well, let's see how much Delta V after we rescue Frandis. Let's see how much Delta V just the inclination change would, would take. Anyway we slice it, it's going to be awkward. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now let's make another quick save here, again, because I'm paranoid and I'm planning on heading back to the tracking station. Yep, yep. Know how this all works. This is fine. Okay. We no longer need Genefin's pod, I believe. Let's see. Contract parameter complete. Explore Kerbin because we rendezvoused. Yep, yep. Rescue Genefin complete. Okay. So we no longer need his pod. So let's go ahead and terminate Genefin's pod. There's no one in it. We're not killing any crew. So all we have here now is Frandis's craft. And actually, I don't know why I did that. Back to the tracking station. <laughs> We're going to fly the rescuer. It's been currently up there for one day. It only was a couple of orbits before I 
raised the periapsis and found ourselves a nice little location. Okay, so he is currently here. We'll give it a go right here. That is quite a ways apart. Okay. Let's see, we're basically on opposite sides of the planet as each other here. And if we adjust this a little bit... Let's see, if we adjust it over here, because it's not perfectly circularized, we'll need to do that. But yeah, we'll need to, looks like, we'll need to do another orbit. We're on basically opposite sides of the planet from each other right now. So let's go ahead and do a warp to here. We can warp quite quickly since we're up above 200 and 240, uh, 240 kilometers, which is why I changed the height up here. That and it just does a lot more per orbit. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So we are currently about here. Let's see, target separation of a lot. Yeah, I don't... I want to modify this. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, target se separation of just a lot of kilometers. I mean, we could do this, but that would be just stupid. So let's try up here and just run a quick check. That's where the target point would be, and then we would be here. Separation of 600 kilometers. So we're... Th th that's about half of what we need, actually. So... That's interesting. What if we do it over here? Ooh, ooh. I think... I mean, oof. We need to get our delta V usage a little bit lower here. Come on, there we go. Get our periapsis up to about here and just see about moving this burn to be more like here. Yeah. Yeah, this is nice. Separation of 11.3 kilometers. Ooh. Separation of 2.7 kilometers. That's close enough. We'll execute this. Okay. That's pretty good right there. And off we go. We are going to be using another 117.8 Delta V for this. So I think we can pretty conclusively say we do not have the Delta V to also rescue Supont in this mission. Sorry, Supont, you'll have to wait. We'll get a dedicated mission for you, I guess. And for that one, we actually wouldn't need this crew hatch, or this crew cabin. Yeah, we, we actually wouldn't. We could save some fuel and some weight there. But I, we'll probably just use the same model, because I'm lazy. It only costs like 22000 to launch this thing anyway. Okay, so target separation is going to be quite good. Let's see, um, 2.7 kilometers. We'll go ahead and warp to here. We should be seeing this guy coming in over around that way relatively soon. Actually, there he is. He was already there, just didn't start rendering. Relative velocity down, we want to match speeds with this guy. And we want to do it quite quickly. Okay, let's start this burn. Okay, we are down to 50 meters per second. 10. Half a meter per second. And we're good. Okay. We are basically, basically moving with him, very close to it. We're going to go ahead and burn towards him ever so slightly, about, about 20 meters per second or so. That's 10. There we go. 
And we'll go ahead and orient ourselves so that we are in a breaking position. We already moved Genefin into the into the crew crew pod down here, so we don't need to move anybody around. Apparently our target velocity is going down. That's a little strange. Let's go ahead and reorient back towards the target. Actually, we're still a ways out, and our target velocity reduction is probably due to us turning with the reaction wheel. We'll go up to around hmm, 30 meters per second. Right like that. There we go. Now for a relative velocity down. We should get get into visual range very soon. I mean, we can kind of see it if you squint a little bit, but not really very well. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and warp a little bit, not super huge amounts. We're still getting closer. Let's go ahead and kill our velocity now. I just don't like how far off target we are currently. There. Okay, and now let's go ahead and burn towards the target slightly. Just ever so gently. Around two meters per second. Uh, maybe five. There we go. Relative velocity down. We're going to want to break soon. There we go. And let's start braking when we're around 50 meters out. We'll get a little bit closer this time. Actually, a little closer than this. This will be fine. One meter per second, and there we go. Kill rot. Okay, let's see here. Where Where is our crew hatch that we actually get in? Here? Or here? I think it's... I think it's this one. So let's go ahead and orient so that we're kind of facing this way a bit. Okay, and because I'm paranoid, quick save. Sometimes it crashes when you switch ships like this, so... Okay, Frandis, hop on out. Let's go, Frandis. Come on. You can do it, Frandis. Just about there. You've impacted it. Oh, Frandis. Frandis, what are you doing? I think you forced it to turn a bit with your impact. Is this the way in? Or is it the other way? I think it's this side. Yeah, it's this side. Okay, Frandis, come on. No, no, no. Frandis. There you go, Frandis. Okay, so we have a thousand meters per second of delta V. Let's go ahead and move Frandis, transfer crew, Frandis, into the crew cabin. Just wanted to double check that we had a heat shield there. We do. So we have a thousand meters per second left. Let's set this guy as the target. And let's just see how many how much delta V it takes to match planes. Come on. There we go. And the answer is. One point seven. Come on. The answer is we can't do it from here. <laughs> It'll take two burns, looks like. Looks like one point two is about the closest we get. But that's nine hundred and eighty five delta V right there. This is not happening. So we're gonna go ahead and just switch over to orbital retrograde 
and we're going to deorbit. Let's see, we are currently here. Where is the KSC? KSC is over here, currently in night. Okay, let's just go ahead and do a deorbit burn. Let's see, Periapsis is currently around 30 kilometers. We have plenty of Delta V, so we'll do a re-entry burn, probably. And let's just go ahead and warp. We will come back for the other for the other Kerbal. Excellent. Surface velocity minus is where we're going to be burning. But we're not going to burn just yet. We'll wait until it gets a little more heated. Also, I just noticed the maneuver planner was right over the Kerbal portraits. That's no good. There. Now we can see how Jeb is very unstable and bouncing around and everyone else is just like, wow, this is this is smooth. <laughs> but Jeb is just in a bouncy house. Good old Jeb. Okay, so we will be starting to take some heat effects pretty soon. Of course, we have plenty of electric charge, so holding this attitude should not be a problem. There we go. We're losing velocity. I mean, we're speeding up, but we're losing we're, we're losing energy in our orbit. So that is excellent. Okay, now we're starting to take heat effects. We'll stick with this until we hit about... Mm, maybe 45. Something like that. Wow, that we are we're coming in on a very very shallow ascent or descent path. I was expecting it to be a little steeper than this, but I don't know why. We we stopped at like 40 for the original periapsis. So, I guess this shouldn't be surprising. But we are going to start the burn at about 45 kilometers. Right about... Now! Okay. <laughs> Man, that just was trolling me with how long it was taking. There we go. So, this isn't going to be a super effective re-entry burn, but it'll be fine. Just need to burn off the extra fuel. I was hoping that we'd be able to get all three in one, but no such luck. I didn't look at the orbits beforehand. If I had, I might have been like, well, maybe we need some... Maybe we need some external fuel tanks for this stage, or maybe we just need two launches. But when I saw that second orbit, I was like, wow, he's out there. <laughs> So that's, that's going to require a dedicated trip. Okay, come on. We're almost burned out here. And we're almost through the danger zone, too. This is a, like, ludicrously successful re-entry burn. I mean, we can almost deploy parachutes immediately. Yeah, that's fine. What's our surface velocity? Oh, even lower than our orbit velocity. Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and eject our booster stage. Goodbye, booster stage. It was nice knowing you. You did your job mostly, but you just didn't have enough gas in the tank to finish it off. Okay, so... I mean, we are moving pretty fast for being this low, but we will decelerate very quickly once we hit this point at about 20 kilometers. I mean, it's just going to be insane. I mean, we're already decelerating extremely quickly and taking two Gs from the deceleration. Nobody seems to care, though. <laughs> Nobody seems to care at all. Okay, we can actually do our drogue shoots. So we shall.
There we go. Drogue shoots away. And we're gonna go ahead and physics warp up. Main shoot out. Excellent. And here we come to a nighttime landing. It's not perhaps perfectly ideal, but it'll, it'll get the job done. Excellent. And we will be impacting the surface of the water momentarily. I mean, it'll be a lot longer now that the stupid main chute deployed. What a jerk. No, smart ASS, I don't want you to be up here. Go away. I was just panning the camera around. <laughs> okay, so we are about to hit the water. Yep. Go ahead. Gonna go ahead and time warp down. It can do silly things on impact if you have physics warp on. There we go. Some interesting splashes going off in straight lines for some reason. But we'll go ahead and recover this. Okay. There we go. So we got ourselves two new Kerbals. And we got ourselves 0 0.3 Science. So that's excellent. Recovered 5,000 of our 22,000 funds that we spent on that particular mission. And Genefrin and Frandis both advanced to level 1. They're an engineer and a scientist, respectively. And we completed the Frandis contract. So, I mean, that's not a, not a huge amount of money. Ah, here we go. Frandis is now recovering in one piece. Gotcha. So, yeah, that's a lot more money. That's a lot more worthwhile. <laughs> okay, what do we got here available? Um land on the moon. We'll do that eventually. Not in the next mission, but... Rescue Kafkin. Uh, what do we got for orbital characteristics here, though? That's the question. It doesn't actually say. Low curb in orbit. I think we're gonna avoid this one for now. We got the money we needed. And we are going to do one more I mean, we could upgrade this guy to level 3 at this point, and that wouldn't be actually a terrible idea. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We'll upgrade our launch pad to level 3. We can't upgrade our VAB yet, but that that's fine. 255 parts is enough for now. It won't be enough forever, though. Okay, so let's go ahead and run the rescuer again. Excellent. We'll just do this as is. This will still be profitable. It'll cost us about 17k, and our two contract parameters, when put together, end up making us, like, close to 70 or 80k. So we're going to go ahead and do this. However, we're going to do that in the next episode, because I just realized this one is running over. See you all then.